Ukraine is about to receive the world's first armored personnel carrier to be armed with a laser. The United States, Sweden, Germany, and several other allies have put together a new package of military aid that includes truly powerful technology. These are no ordinary transport vehicles. One of them can unleash a meteor shower of missiles on the enemy, another can sail the seas and attack ships, and a third is armed with real laser weapons. How were they able to create such cool technology and deliver it to Ukraine? Why is the American military company Lockheed Martin admiring Ukrainian developers? Will these new vehicles be able to withstand enemy tanks effectively? And which one is the most promising? There are indeed many questions, and the best way to answer them is to see the technology in action, specifically in Ukraine, where the M2A3 Bradley is already out there destroying tanks. The Bradley is one of the most famous and popular infantry fighting vehicles in the world. Its fame is well deserved given its amazing capabilities, advanced technology, and ease of use. The Bradley is a powerful combat machine designed for supporting infantry and fighting armored targets. It's equipped with a 25mm automatic cannon for destroying lightly armored targets as well as two machine guns that can fire 600 rounds per minute each. However, its most valuable asset are its guided anti-tank javelin missiles. I'm pretty sure you've already heard of this weapon. It became famous for its 30-pound smart projectiles and it's used all over the world. Unlike its counterpart, the Stinger, the Javelin has received many new technologies and it now operates on the fire and forget principle. All the operator and the Bradley have to do is press the launch button. The Javelin will then identify its target, rise to an altitude of a thousand feet, and drop down from above like a falling meteor. This kind of strike is guaranteed to destroy any tank, so the Bradley will emerge victorious from any skirmish. Moreover, this IFV is much faster than tanks and can accelerate up to 50 miles per hour with fairly high maneuverability. To test the maneuverability and power of the Bradley, let's have a hypothetical race between it and the T-72 tank over a distance of 60 miles. At full speed, it would take the Bradley about an hour and a half to cover this distance, while the heavy tank would need at least two hours. The Bradley would be able to spend that extra time fortifying its position thereby allowing it to switch from defense to offense, carry out an attack, and greet the T-72 in the ruins of its colleagues. Their ensuing encounter would soon leave the tank as nothing but a pile of metal. These are the types of vehicles that Ukraine needs right now. They're more convenient than tanks, can move faster between battle points, and are much easier to repair. Even from an economic point of view, infantry fighting vehicles are much more profitable. For example, the Bradley costs $3 million each, while the base model of an Abrams tank costs $6 million. The benefits are obvious, and that extra cash would be better spent on improvements, such as a laser gun. That's exactly what NATO engineers had in mind when they created the latest version of the M1128 Striker. And this is the version that the United States has handed over to Ukraine in the most recent aid package. They could take a beating and just keep going, and that, that's one of the biggest things I like. Some information has come out that the company Lockheed Martin has been working closely with General Dynamics and supplying them with their advanced developments. No one has divulged any secrets, but there are reports that the companies have exchanged data on powerful laser weapons that will be used in upgrades of all the latest cutting-edge technology. Under an extensive modernization program, even the Striker has been fitted with a fairly powerful laser and has undergone successful testing. This is the first combat use of such developments among ground-based forces, as previously only planes and ships have used these kinds of blasters. During testing, 250 kilowatt lasers were used to demonstrate their short-range air defense capabilities. Interestingly, the very first test was successful. Not only were missiles shot down, but also kamikaze drones. It's no secret that drones are currently a major problem for Ukraine, so being able to shoot them down in a matter of seconds is a big deal. Not only can the striker heat up its target, but it can also disable electronics, penetrate enemy's armor, and literally detonate them from the inside. Quite a spectacular show. In general, the striker is an infantry fighting vehicle designed to provide fire support and safe transportation for soldiers. To help achieve this, the striker's body is made of steel armor sheets reinforced with ceramic plates, allowing it to withstand machine gun fire and shrapnel. Additionally, a SEAT armor protection kit can be installed, 
This is a set of unique lattice screens positioned 16 inches from the vehicle's body, protecting it from RPGs and tank strikes. Several months later, I was in a striker. The striker in front of me took two artillery rounds that were cemented in the uh, sidewalk. One of the key features of the striker is its speed. It can travel nearly 62 miles per hour on the highway, with a range of 330 miles on a single tank of fuel. Even at full speed, it remains quiet and inconspicuous thanks to its hybrid engine. On the striker, uh, as proven in combat, is, is a very quiet vehicle. High mobility and sufficient protection? What more could you ask for? Oh right, combat power. While the previous vehicle used self-guided missiles, the Striker, in addition to a laser, is equipped with a 105mm tank gun with automatic loading, target tracking, and firing angle adjustment. So it's a little different, a different feel. Uh, it has a more kickback when you fire the main gun. Together with its energy weapons and powerful cannon, the Striker is capable of destroying anything, anywhere. By the way, laser technology development is greatly accelerated in response to the rise of combat drones that can't be taken down by conventional air defense systems. Ukrainian developers haven't lagged behind either and have created possibly the best armored personnel carrier imaginable. We're talking about a development called the Storm. It's a universal armored vehicle that combines all the best features of its competitors. Developers equipped the Storm with a hybrid power plant consisting of a diesel engine and three electric motors, which together provide a power output of 2,500 horsepower. If a speed of 87 miles per hour doesn't impress you, then take a look at how this armored vehicle moves through the water at 19 miles per hour, with standing waves up to five feet high. You can use that to put troops in at the decisive time on the enemy's flank. Developers are working closely with Lockheed Martin, which has spent over a billion dollars developing laser weapons. The brand new Storm will receive its own version of the American Logs, which can destroy an enemy missile or fry all of an aircraft's equipment in just two seconds. The Storm is capable of transporting cargo, protecting personnel from missiles, and even destroying an enemy with an invisible beam. You could certainly call it a full-fledged amphibious tank, which is an incredible breakthrough technology in itself. But for now, the storm is still in the testing phase, so we won't make any bold statements. The question of which armored vehicle is stronger, the Bradley, the Striker, or the Storm, depends on which criteria we compare. The Bradley is an infantry fighting vehicle equipped with a 25mm automatic cannon, anti-tank guided missiles, and machine guns. It's a powerful combat vehicle designed for supporting infantry and combating armored targets. It can also be used for reconnaissance. The Striker, in turn, is a wheeled armored personnel carrier that can be equipped with various types of weapons depending on the specific modification, including machine guns, automatic grenade launchers, lasers, and other weapons. The Striker is typically used for transporting infantry to the battlefield, supporting them, and performing other tasks related to providing mobility and protection for infantry. Despite its specific concept, the Storm looks the most interesting and multifaceted. It can be used for storming ships or landing on beaches. Among the vehicles we've presented today, it's the most well-armored, but it only has a laser weapon, which isn't as good at taking out tanks as missiles and guns are. Speaking of the advantages and disadvantages of each vehicle, the Bradley has more powerful weaponry including an automatic cannon and anti-tank missiles, which make it more effective in combat against armored targets. However, the Bradley is also heavier and more cumbersome, which can make its operation difficult in urban conditions and other confined spaces. On the other hand, the Striker is lighter and more maneuverable, making it more suitable for urban operations and rapid movement over long distances. However, the Striker usually doesn't have as much fighting power as the Bradley. As for the Storm's pros and cons, it's too early to say as it still has to go through several testing stages before it falls into the hands of the military. Each of these vehicles has its strengths and weaknesses, so which one to use will depend on the specific situation. But all of them will greatly help Ukraine defeat the enemy and reclaim its territory. That concludes today's video. We'd be very grateful for your likes and support in the comments. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like to see on our channel. Thanks for watching. See you soon.